الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا وترضى um, First of all جزاكم الله خير to every one of you for coming and to the management in particular for having me here it's an honor for me to come here this is my third time coming to Lewisham Masjid actually in the in the eight and a half years I've been Muslim um, MashaAllah you know there's there's a a big blessing in this masjid to the point even us from Tottenham because we don't have as much of a revert community and as many people entering into Islam as you do in, in Lewisham um, we appreciate when we come here so Alhamdulillah Jazakum Allah Khair and may Allah increase the Sheikh Shaquille and Imam Ashraf and Imam Mustafa in their work in the da'wah I mean um, yeah, so I mean, I suppose it's appropriate to just start off maybe with my ethnicity. The Prophet ﷺ, when he would meet someone, he'd often ask them, where are you from? So, I'm British born, my parents are both British, uh, but my ethnicity is that my mother is, is Irish, from an Irish background, and my father is from a Mauritian background. Um, my father's family's background are actually Hindu, but they were never practicing. They sort of just come to England and I suppose if you would, were to ask them, they'd say they're Hindu, but they probably lived closer to a Christian lifestyle than, than a Hindu lifestyle. Um, my mother's family uh, were quite strong Catholics. Uh, my nanny and my granddad, they were quite strong Catholics. My mother herself wasn't actually very practicing. Um, nor were a lot of my family, but my nanny and granddad were. And my father, he passed away when I was five years old. And after he passed away, I didn't ever really get to know my father's side of the family. So you pretty much can say I grew up in majority of a, like an Irish type of background, British Irish. Um, so yeah, I mean, my mother never ever forced me to go to church. I had done the traditional things that everyone done. I was christened approximately the age of one. Um, I done my Holy Communion when I was, I think, seven years old. Then I done my confirmation when I think I was about 10 years old. Uh, but that was really it. Um, we'd sometimes go to church on Christmas Eve um, if my mum felt up for it. My nanny and granddad always went, especially my granddad. My granddad was quite, quite religious. Um, so anyway, lived growing up, but alhamdulillah, Allah always blessed me with a, a God consciousness. You know, I always believed that Allah was there. I always believed in one God, um, although I wasn't really putting it into practice. Now, I would sort of notice that I had a bit more of a, on the out, from what i seen anyway, a um, bit more of a God consciousness than the rest of my, my family members, my cousins and whatnot. We had we're quite a large family, got loads of cousins, I think I've got close to 30, 35 cousins or something like that. So um, I would notice that I would sort of feel a bit of a God consciousness more than the rest of the family. Um, so anyway, I got to about the age of 11, 12 years old. And I said to my mum, you know, I want to start going to church. And you know, she was for it. She was just like, yeah, you know, I'll tell granddad to come and pick you up. She wasn't going to take me. She's not, she weren't a church goer at all. So she contacted my granddad, her father, and let him know that I wanted to come. And he was very happy, obviously. I was the only grandchild out of all of us that took an interest like that. So anyway, this, this lasted, I'd go to church with him, waking up early on a Sunday morning, um, which is quite ajib for like a, a boy going through that stage in his life, you know, he's usually staying up late on Saturday, sleeping in on Sunday morning, but I was making an effort to, to wake up, to go to church. Um, this lasted for about two and a half years, maybe it's slightly less than that, maybe two years. Um, my granddad would come pick me up for church, go to church, go back after to, to their house, and then he'd drop me home. And wallahi, after every church session, if you were to ask me, what did you just learn? I really wouldn't be able to tell you. 
And the reason I gave that background about God consciousnesses and I wanted to come is because I made a conscious effort. No one forced me. I made a conscious effort to go to church. So for someone that's making that effort, obviously you would assume that they're putting some, for, some form of effort into understanding what they're doing. And I really didn't see the point of anything we were doing. Um, and I felt like if this is what we're supposed to be doing, it's not enough. So anyway, I sort of stopped going to church. It, you know, you can only last so long doing something that's not fulfill, fulfilling to you. So I went to school, went to, I was going to secondary school and my best friend, uh, it was a Nigerian family, uh, my best friend, he was part of five brothers. Now these five brothers are quite important in terms of the story. Um, so he was the youngest out of the five brothers, okay? And the other four brothers went to a different school. I think their mother, they seen how bad they were in school and the last one they said, Khalash, you're going somewhere else. Um, so about the age of 15, I remember I think I was in school one day or walking home from school with my friend. And he said to me, yeah, you know my brother become Muslim. His, so it was his middle brother. So he's the youngest, he's got four older brothers, so the one, uh, four years older than him, the middle child, become Muslim. So at the time, uh, you know, didn't think anything of it. I thought, okay, Muslim today, probably going to be something else tomorrow. No one really paid any attention. Even his family didn't really pay any attention to it. Now, this family are very, very deep thinkers. They're very intelligent, very intelligent family. MashaAllah, I've noticed a lot of Nigerians, I don't know if it's the upbringing or whatever it is, they are quite, MashaAllah, with it. I don't know if that's how they're taught to think growing up, but they are usually very, um, very wise. And they were, they were a very wise family. So when he's become Muslim, as much as people want to brush it off, you can't help the fact that he's taken this decision and it's probably some, in one way, shape or form, calculated. Although obviously shaitan is shaitan, doesn't want anyone to become Muslim. So, you know, they sort of just brushed it off. And then he'd start speaking to us. And I remember that when my friend told me that, I didn't really know how to feel. The next time I went to the house, now this house was like the, the jam. This was the spot. This is where everyone went to chill. So imagine there's five brothers, yeah? Each of them two years apart. Each of them has their own set of friends. So you can imagine when everyone is there with their friends, it's, it's, it's like a youth club in, in the house. Um, so he would come in. Now he used to sell drugs before Islam. He was, he was, he really was, he was on the road. He was quite, quite deep into it as well. I remember next time I seen him, he's wearing a white thobe and a, and a white turban. So I'm looking at what's wrong with this guy? Like, Big and they were all there, the whole family are huge. The shortest one, I think, is six foot three. Um, and the tallest one is, I think, is six five, I believe. So, anyway, you can imagine this for us is ajib to look at. Now, you might have got used to it in Lewisham, even the reverts here. You might have seen a lot of Muslims around, so it's like, but in Tottenham, we don't really see a lot of that, especially this was back in 2003. That Islam was very, very new in Tottenham at that time. So I actually started thinking, this guy has actually gone crazy. You know, he's left his, whatever the fashion was at the time, jeans or whatever, whatever, whatever the fashion was, he was into it. He, he was very fashionable. He used to make a lot of money from what he'd done. And he's dressing like this now. But then he'd speak to me. And subhanAllah, he would speak to the whole room actually. And there were sort of like three categories in the room of people. There were those that were like, all right, just leave me alone, no problem, Muslim, yeah, just leave me alone, I don't want to hear about it. This was the first category. Another category were people that would listen out of respect, but they really didn't want to talk to him. And there were some of us, Allah blessed me to be one of them, that really paid attention to what he was saying. And subhanAllah, when he spoke about Islam, it was just like, you know, first he, 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 he came down the angle of, you know, 
are you is it okay to be something just because your parents have told you this is what you are because if that's the case in in of itself it's a contradiction because what do you tell uh the hindu parents as opposed to christian parents you can't say both of you are right so when he got that principle into my head you know he'd ask me you know what are you i was you know i'm, I'm catholic you know i'm Suppose that's what I am, that's what I was raised as When he asked me why, I really didn't have a good enough answer I really didn't So subhanAllah I mean this time I will never have enough time to speak about how much dawah he gave me um, But to cut a long story, a very long story short um, The words that would come out of his mouth I'd feel like it would It'd be like from the arrow from his mouth to my heart. Alhamdulillah. So, anyway, um, he, would be, he would convince me. But of course, shaitan is always with you. Shaitan wants to take people to hellfire however he's going to do it. Some people he's going to tell them to be uh, uh, fire worshippers. Some people pagans. Whatever it is, Allah, he's going to misguide you in any way, shape or form. So, he was still play, putting these doubts into my mind But yeah, but what if, what if what he's saying is not true What if, you know, you're going to leave what you've been taught About a year later The brother, just younger than him So the one just older than my best friend Become Muslim also Now this was a big turning point Because when I tell you these brothers <laughs> May Allah bless them They would argue about Everything at great length I think I've heard them argue for half an hour before about ice poles Philosophically getting into why he, his stance is right And why your stance is wrong And they couldn't agree on anything Okay So for two people, to, two of them to agree on something It was in of itself a sign A year later, the oldest one becomes Muslim so now there's three out of the five of them that have become Muslim. So now it's like, all right, they're the attacking team now. For three of them, anyone who knew that family, for three of them to all agree on something like that, it at least deserves attention, at least. So anyway, what would happen is they would, uh, this got to, so I was about 17, 18 by this point. And mashallah, those, the three of them, they would go off to, to study Now they were going to Syria This was at a time where Syria, mashallah, was a good place to study, very safe um, It was really well known for its Quran and its Arabic This was about 2003 to 2006, this type of time So what they would do, they would go study um, When their money runs out, come back, earn some more money Go back out to study, money run out, come back And this is what they would do And sometimes they'd come back at different times Depending on their, their financial situation Every time they left It felt like a part of me was gone And maybe it was to do with the fact that I didn't really grow up with a father But When I heard them speak I felt safe with them I remember I was talking to a brother about it the other day I used to think to myself, these guys don't sin They don't sin Obviously I know now all Muslims sin but at the time, I was thinking like, these, these are like angels, I don't, they, they don't do anything wrong They're like up, when we're, when we're up playing PlayStation at 3 in the morning, they're up washing and stuff like What, what are these guys doing? Don't they sleep even? So, when they'd go away, I'd feel lost And I'd indulge more into the ills of the society where I was So this would happen, and it got to the point it got to early, late 2009 uh, Sorry, early, late 2008 And they'd gone, they'd gone away for their longest period of time by this point So when they come back I really felt like, like That was like the biggest The furthest I'd gone away from being a good person On the roads, whatever you want to call it But I really was Not doing what I knew I should be doing Because at this point I believed Islam was the truth by my belief, if I die in this state, I'm going to Jahannam And I'm going there forever and I'm never coming out So I, I knew there was something I should be doing that I'm not doing So one of them come back this time And I sort of clung on to him 
You know, I always wanted to be around him. I always wanted to just talk to him. And mashallah, he would talk to me about, you know, guidance. And I'd say to him, you know, I want to do it, but I'm weak. So he would, he basically put this principle into my head like, Allah will guide you if you want to be guided. There will never be the case that you truly want guidance and Allah will leave you to go to Jahannam if that is what you truly want. It's not befitting of Allah to do such a thing. Truly want guidance, no, not saying you want guidance, truly wanting guidance. So, subhanAllah, at that time, I went through a stage of about five months where I got into three near-death experiences. Now at that time, I'm starting to not enjoy life now. I've tried the whole, anything you can imagine that you would think that this is what enjoyment of life is. I tried it, got bored of it, and I'm basically not depressed, but I won't go as far as saying I was depressed, but I definitely wasn't fulfilled. Partly because obviously I knew I wasn't doing what I should be doing. So, the first instance came, you might say, expectedly, like living the life I was living, where I, I went out um, with, with some of my friends from Tottenham, and we, went to, we basically went to like a party. And I went with five of my friends, and obviously we, we actually went, I think, to London Bridge. And those of you who come from a certain background will know as well that when you go to a different area, you got to be prepared for stuff to happen. We weren't prepared. There was like six of us. Um, anyway, my, my friend, he, had, um, he got into a little bit of a confrontation with one of the guys there. Now, it's important to know, at this time, Allah put fear in my heart of death. Before this, and alhamdulillah, like... I've never been, Allah has blessed me to never be um, fearful of men, alhamdulillah. I was never someone who was afraid of, of people or anything like that. But at this time, I feared death because I feared Jahannam. And I knew my death at this, in this state equals Jahannam for me. So I feared death. So anyway, he gets into a bit of confrontation and I'm just like, oh my God. I'm not scared of the guys. I'm scared of what's going to happen. I'm thinking... This is the night Allah is going to take my life because I haven't been doing what I should be doing. So anyway, it gets broken up, whatever. We go to our side, they go to their side. But by the way, there was like 40 to 50 of them. It's their area, of course. So six of us, I'm the only one of my complexion. Yeah, All of my friends are, are dark skin. So I stand out like a sore thumb. <laughs> so anyway... SubhanAllah, the evils of, of music and alcohol and these things. My friend, he's, he's, he's on the wall. I can't remember. There was like a song playing. It was probably some type of shaitanic song. And I just, I'm looking at my friend and he's like this. And I'm like, oh my God, he's going to go and start something again. So all of a sudden he gets off the wall, starts walking over towards them. The guy sees him coming. The guy's thinking, yeah, all right. He comes over. All of them come over. A big fight breaks out. Now, remember I said I'm... I stick out like a sore thumb, obviously, because of the, the color of my skin. The bouncers, they've done a great job. They split up everyone. I don't know how they managed to split up everyone, but they put all of my friends outside, and they closed the door, stood by the door, and I was inside with 40 of them. And like I said, there's no mistaking me because of my, my skin color. So... Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me with strength to just get past the bouncers, run up the stairs. They all start chasing me. I'm running. I'm in the middle of, I don't know where I am. I just decide to take a direction, run. All of a sudden, my friend pulls up in his car. It's kind of like moving as I'm jumping in. I noticed that his, his window had been smashed. And then we drove off. So anyway, I went back and I was really pondering over that situation. Like, subhanAllah, like my, my name before I was Muslim was KJ. Like Allah really nearly took your life there How many chances do you want? Anyway, life continues um, Second incident My friend, my best friend Who's actually the youngest brother of the three Who become Muslim He got into a conversation with someone 
So basically, my friend ended up beating up a guy. Didn't get sorted there. Phone calls were made. Well, we're going to meet at this place. We're going to sort it out. Whatever. So my friends phoned me like, yeah, we're going to we're going to link them. And these times I'm shook, <laughs> not of people of death. So I'm just sort of like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a bit under the weather, you know. It's not really. The... So anyway, um, I couldn't really get out of it. Obviously, having a cough isn't a isn't a reason not to go for beef. <laughs> so they come and got me. We went. So as we got there. As we pulled into Ikea car park And as we drove in we, We've got We've got like one middleman. He's actually like a famous rapper I'd rather not mention his name but So he's sort of in the middle He knows both parties And he's saying to Us Like don't worry Don't worry about bringing anything Just come Just come you lot Just come No one can touch you Whatever So we go As we pull in we didn't notice as we were pulling in until we got into the entrance of the car park and turned the car around that there was about nine cars waiting for us. All of them packed with people. So as the car, as we've stopped our car, we've just seen loads of guys just appear. There was, I don't know how many of them, there must have been, there was more than 20. So I'm fronting, I'm trying to pretend like I'm not scared as a defense tactic. You know, so I get out of the car, but I'm just in my head, I'm just saying, Ya Allah, please don't let anything happen. Please. Because this is my thought process at these times. When I'm getting into these situations, I'm thinking about Jahannam. I'm not, I'm just thinking, Ya Allah, please get me out of this. I promise I'm going to become Muslim. You, you save me this time, I'm going to become Muslim. Anyway, the guy who my friend beat up starts walking us, walking towards us. My friend starts walking towards him. A bit of kerfuffle The guy pulls out a gun So he pulls out a gun And he's just sort of waving it And everyone's sort of ducking and diving um, We managed to scramble back Back to the car um, Alhamdulillah His cousin The guy who pulled out the gun His cousin Stops him Says what are you doing You're under cameras What are you doing You're stupid We speed off So again What's going on in my mind is Allah just saved me again that could have really turned out in a way which would have been eternity in hellfire. So, after each incident's happened, I'm becoming more scared on a day-to-day -day basis to the point now, the whole, my day is consumed with fear. I'm starting to feel like the building's gonna collapse on me, a car's gonna hit into me, something's gonna happen. That, because Allah has given me chance after chance after chance. I remember Abdul, uh, the, the brother who became Muslim first, his name's Abdul Hakim. By this point, he'd been giving me dawah for about four and a half years. So it's not like, oh, the dawah's new to me and, you know, it, it's just, it, I'm taking time. I've had time. I've had a lot, a lot of time. I know Islam is the truth. I know what I have to do. It's not, is it right or not? It's, okay, when am I going to do it? So now the third and final instance was something that maybe is, could happen to anyone And this is when I really More than any time thought Like that is directly a message from Allah So we're walking Me and my friend We're walking down the road one day And Alhamdulillah by this point I was becoming consciously aware of my behaviour Because I remember uh, one, of the, one of them said to me uh, Allah will guide those who wants to be guided So try to cut out little sins here and there Little things that you know that Allah won't like Like lying um, cheating All of these types of things Try and cut them out And inshallah This will act as a means of guidance for you So I was doing that I stopped like Eating pork I consciously made a Real big effort To, to not lie um, Even if I knew It was going to put me In a bad situation Still would tell the truth Trying to be polite I'm trying to change My character So One of the Problems I had before Islam Was that I used to f Occasionally gamble Now I'd stopped gambling Alhamdulillah I'd stopped gambling So anyway I was walking past A Labrooks, me and my friend This was Friday afternoon So as we're walking past He says to me Bro can we go in and flip So I'm like no 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 no. He doesn't understand why I'm saying no He doesn't understand where my head is But I'm like no 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 just, just, Let's carry on doing what we're doing 
So now this lab rocks is like on a corner, yeah? Now we're crossing the road. Now the way this road is, is basically there's a junction going that way, cars going that way. And then there's two lanes of cars going this way. All right, in the middle of these two lanes is an island. Because in the cars that are going this way, uh, one set of cars is turning right and one's going straight. So we get to the first island. So there's two islands now. We get to the first island. Then we go to the second island. Now when we're in the second island, it, I believe now it was from Allah. It might have been from Shaitan and his plan was weak or it might have been from Allah. But something said to me, no, no, just go back. Just fling a couple coins in the machine and see what you can make. So I said to him, bro, let's go. So now, as I've said that, I've said it and I've turned as I've said it. All right, so the cars, they're coming this way. Yeah, so there's one lane of cars going this way, one lane of cars going this way. I'm in the middle on the island. So as I've said it, I've turned that way. So as I've turned, he shouted, KJ. And I've jumped back and the car's literally, car that was coming down here speeding to get through to turn right has gone straight past me. Literally, I'm talking centimeters. So I jumped back and then I could feel all the blood had gone from my face. It became even whiter. <laughs> so anyway, I was just like, I was in complete shock because of everything that had happened leading up to this point. I'm talking from, I first started getting that one. That's how my mind is. So I said to my friend, no, no, just, let's just, I don't want to go anymore. So as we're walking, he's in shock at how close that was for me. So he's laughing. He's like, ah, you nearly got written off. Ah. I'm thinking, bro, you don't know where my head is right now. So as we're walking, I said to him, do you know what, bro, I'm going to go home. So he's like, why, why are you busting out? Why are you going to go home? It's like Friday afternoon. This is like when the weekend gets started. I said, bro, I'm going home. If anything, I'll phone you later sort of thing. Because he really didn't understand what my head was. I went home and I called Hamza, the oldest, the oldest brother. He was the one that was back. I told him everything that happened. So he's just like, yeah, this is what happens, isn't it? Are you going to turn away from it or are you going to take heed? It's up to you. So I said to him, bro, do you know what? I want to become Muslim. I said, but I just need some more da'wah. Well, like shaitan, <laughs> he will make you procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate. So he's like, okay, I'm going to come to your house. He comes to my house. He, we arranged for him to meet up with me on a Sunday evening. So Sunday comes, sorry, the Saturday, the next day. Saturday comes and I didn't call him, he didn't call me. Now as a Muslim, I know now what he's doing. He's trying to play the, don't want to be too forceful, but don't want to be too lax. You've got to find that balance. Obviously he's been giving me dawah for, He'd been giving me that for about three and a half years by that point. So he's trying to use hikmah. He didn't call me. I didn't call him. Sunday comes now. He calls me. He said, yeah, bro, um, you didn't call me last night. I was like, oh, you know, I thought you were going to call me. So he's like, yeah, no problem. Tonight? So I'm like, I don't really know how to say no. I'm like, all right, yeah, no problem. Come to my house tonight. Comes to my house. Give me that for the whole night. All the way up until like four in the morning. So it gets to a point, it's so late, he's tired. I drop him home. I drop him home. So I'm like to him, like, yeah, like same again tomorrow, yeah? He's like, yeah, no problem. Next day comes now. So this is Monday. So he says to me, you know, Abdul Hakim's gonna come tonight, which is the one who become Muslim first. And the reason his name is Abdul Hakim, because Allah has blessed him with wisdom. Really, Allah has really blessed him with wisdom. Uh, the brothers who gave him his shahada, just by his way of speaking to them uh, before Islam, as soon as he became Muslim, he said, they said, your name's Abdul Hakim. You're the slave of the most wise. So he comes, Abdul Hakim comes. Now, subhanAllah, he had just come back from Syria, just come back from studying, just getting back, back into life in UK. And he was working like a really run down job. He was doing like an apprentice apprenticeship in a, in a uncle's mechanics the uncle was paying him 
I think something very silly. It was like it was less than fifty pound a week or something like that. And it was like a full day's work, you know, from eight in the morning all the way until the evening. So he comes again, giving me that hour for the whole night. Gets to like four in the morning. The, the, the brother Abdul Hakim is nearly falling asleep. Subhanallah. So I say, hey, I'm gonna drop you home. I'm not becoming Muslim. I'm I, I'm <laughs> I'm delaying, delaying. Anyway, um, I drop him home. So I get home with him. I say to him, like, yeah, same again tomorrow, yeah? He's like, you know, as you like, no problem. This is, this is what I'm here for. This is my duty. Well, like, may Allah bless those brothers, subhanAllah. So the next day comes now. And I felt very guilty for what I'd done to him the night before Because I know he'd gone the whole night without sleep Then he's got to go to work early in the morning He's going to work the whole night Then he's going to come back to my house in the, in the evening And I'm not I'm basically not becoming Muslim So I, f I felt guilty Like I'm wasting his time So when I went to pick him up After work on the Tuesday By this point He says to me I said to him Bro, I'm going to become Muslim tonight So he's just like Inshallah, inshallah. Comes to my house, give me da'wah. Whole night. Everything he's saying, I know already. I know everything. Just making excuses in front of Allah. Comes time to drop him home again. So jump in my car, driving him home. As we're driving home, I say to him, look, I look at him like, yeah, yeah, same again tomorrow, yeah? And he didn't answer. I remember his name's Abdul Hakim for a reason. And there's a reason Hamza sent him. So he, he didn't say anything. So as we're approaching to near his home, he says, Stop at the shop. Stop at a shop. So he gets out. Then he just puts his head in the car and he just says to me, In such a nonchalant way. I thought you were going to become Muslim today And then he just shuts the door That is when I really felt like I met shaitan My heart was just going Doom, 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 doom No, no, don't listen to him He's trying it with you You need another night to find out <laughs> So he gets back in the car So we start driving towards his house now And I'm saying to myself like, Because these days I'm, I'm living my life Scared of everything Scared of driving Scared of walking on the pavement Scared of everything I'm saying to myself KJ what are you going to do You're going to keep Okay you're not going to become Muslim Because you want to live a fun life But you're not enjoying your life So just at that moment I just said to him Bro I want to become Muslim I said I'm going to become Muslim When we get back to your house And ha you and Hamza can be witnesses Because I heard that you should have two witnesses He said forget that Pull over now He's obviously seen me for the past four and a half years on off, on off. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. He's like, forget Hamza. Forget two witnesses. Don't worry about that. I'm going to be the witness in front of Allah. So we're driving. I'm seeing bare space to pull over. And I'm just, I'm just not pulling over. I was like, oh, that's a bit tight. <laughs> driving. We get to the road round the corner from his house. This road was always packed with cars When I tell you This road was always packed with cars Wallahi, I turned onto the road There was not one car on the left None I could do a 360 into the a space <laughs> There's no, There was no way I had any more excuses So I pull over Now it's dark I just see Abdul Hakim's teeth He's just smiling at me <laughs> At the corner of my eye And he's like, look, just calm down you believe that Allah is one And you believe Muhammad is a messenger of Allah Right? I said yeah I believe that He said so we're going to say that in Arabic I said okay So he went through it Ashadu I said Ashadu An la An la ilaha All the way to the end Alhamdulillah I became Muslim And then straight away I, I hear stories of different reverts About what happened with them And I usually hear A very common theme which is that when they become Muslim, I feel like change dropped from me. I felt this light in my chest. I didn't feel that. 
In fact, I felt the opposite. And the reason I'm mentioning this is so that if a reaver ever feels what I feel, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's everyone goes through different things. And I felt like straight away Shaitan came to me and went, No, what have you done? So anyway, I'm just I turn on my car and I'm just speeding off to his house. And he's next to me going, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So I'm like, what does that mean? He's like, it means this is what Allah has willed. This is what Allah has willed. So we go around to his house. So, and I'm just like, I'm hyperventilating. I was always a very calm person before Islam. I was hyperventilating. I felt like I was sweating. Went upstairs. Hamza comes down. I'm thinking, don't these guys sleep? Like, what's, why is he still up? It's like four in the morning. Hamza comes running downstairs. He gives salam to Abdul Hakim. So Abdul Hakim says to me, yeah, you know you become Muslim, yeah? So Hamza just goes, puts his head down, walks up to me, gives me a huge hug. I say, you think I'm a big guy? These brothers, mashallah, they're, they're big guys, mashallah. He just wraps his arm around me, just squeezes me. And subhanAllah, um, the next minute, a Bengali brother turned up, Zakaria. <laughs> I think you these guys, I'm telling you, they got no routine. He comes with a with a gift, mashallah. Obviously, I know now they probably called him and said, KJ has just become Muslim because Zakaria was also giving me da'wah. They were working us for years, years they were working on us. And um, yeah, alhamdulillah, that's, um, I prayed Salat al-Fajr with them because it was Fajr time. And since that prayer, alhamdulillah, I, I'm only saying it not to show off, but it's because it's fard and it's inshallah, it's an, an encouragement. From that Fajr, I've never missed a Salah, Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah, that's how Allah blessed me to come to Islam, Alhamdulillah.